So this is the last week of January. Since the end of November, I have been giving direction to public servants paid to serve the public with issues they're having, yet nothing has changed for me. Now, why would that be? What part about I've had my home stolen, every dime embezzled, left destitute and homeless, do you all not understand? And so now I have to try to continue on speaking to those who are unable to serve the public? Let's understand the trauma that I, as a peculiar woman, have experienced since my arrival in 1973. The trauma doesn't stop for the peculiar people because, as my brother explained to all of you, we are hated. We are hated by the world, by every nation. It doesn't matter where we go or where we are. We are hated without cause. Without cause, we are hated. This has been my experience here, exactly what my brother said it would be. You know my brother, don't you? You're about to get all ready for his, um, this holiday of his alleged rising, right? So I know you know who I'm talking about. Your entire lives are built around these holidays. Trauma. Decades of continual trauma because war is what we experience here and war is trauma. I've gone through assault, poor decisions, fraudulent foreclosures, definitely feeling unloved, unresolved injuries that would level anybody, death of the loved one, yes, bullying constantly, abandonment, yep. Forced adoption of my son. Yeah, no one listens. No one listens to me because the one telling the truth is always crazy. That's the one that they falsely accuse of being crazy because the truth sounds crazy. Because it's the truth. That's a language, this world that doesn't speak, nor does it understand. Exactly like my brother told y'all. Defamation of character, it's constant, it's constant. Divorce, yes, witnessing terror, illness, kidnapping, the abduction of my child, um, having to come out with my identity, which is the only way I can explain why, why all of these horrific acts of persecution keep happening to me. Persecution to end my life, quite clearly. Uh, <laughs> poisoning and toxicity, yeah, well... Uh, that's most of the humans that I'm around. If I have to be around the humans, uh, most of them are poison. Most of them are toxic. That's the problem. That's what makes us peculiar. Living in fear constantly. Failed surgeries, injuries, embarrassments, wartime experiences, being robbed, um, being raped continually since I've been homeless and made destitute on purpose. Emotionally, physically, and sexually abused, yeah. Ridiculed, yes. Financial stress, fuck. I don't know. Having everything that you've ever fucking worked your whole life to have stolen from you in acts of baritry and bullshit? You don't think that's stressful? Being made homeless and destitute by fucking witches and warlocks? Well, we'll see when it happens to you, okay? We'll see how you hold up. Physical confrontation, neglect, betrayal. Yeah, pretty much. So basically the entire list there of trauma, tra traumatic events have happened to me in my life and continue to happen to me. So there are symptoms that come along with those continual acts of trauma. Cognitive, right, exactly. Physical, yes, definitely. Fatigue and exhaustion, that's definitely the problem here, right? Behavioral, interesting, right? Social, social isolation and withdrawal. Hmm. Now that would be the reason why I disappeared. Had to heal a bit from the last act of genocide. I've just survived. Let's all take a note right here, right now. 
the same fucking sick pigs, pigs, pukes, and dogs murdered my brother about 2,000 years ago. You notice that my brother's still talking? Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid. The peculiar people are peculiar because we keep talking after you get rid of us. Mm Mm-hmm. Still talking 2,000 years later. Isn't that interesting? Huh. Looks like there is life after death, eh, assholes? That should fucking terrify you right there. Psychological. Oh, my... Yes. Well, yeah, pretty much. Sadness, hopelessness. Absolutely. Like, it's trauma. It, It changes who you are. What are common reactions to trauma? Anger, fear, guilt, anxiety, depression, difficulty concentrating, withdrawing from family and friends. Okay, that's interesting. Physical responses to trauma. Fatigue. Yeah, see, that's where the chronic fatigue comes in, right? Chronic unexplained pain and health challenges. Exactly. I'm being poisoned to death by the wicked. I cannot stand the way words are used because words are powerful. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, people. Complex post-traumatic stress injury. Being injured is not a disorder, so that, that's no longer going to be the term used. It's now PTSI. So what can cause complex PTSI? Complex post-traumatic stress injuries can affect anyone who have been exposed to long-term sustained and repeated traumatic events. Right, events like things that provoke fear, helplessness, and horror. Hmm, well, I've provided my testimony repeatedly. And obviously, it's all of those things. Some examples, let's see here. Regular and repeated exposure to verbal abuse. Well, continual acts of baritry is verbal abuse. Being told by liars... Uh, To do things that I don't need to do so they can steal money is verbal abuse. Being lied to constantly and denied service, being intimidated, is, uh, yeah, verbal abuse. Emotional abuse or threats, long-term exposure to bullying. Well, yes, that's exactly right. Frequent sexual victimization and abuse and regular long-term feelings of captivation and powerlessness. Well, there you go. I guess now we can see the problem with why I'm so tired all the time and why you don't hear from me. And when you do hear from me, it's usually pretty sporadic because I I know that I'm speaking to um, monsters, male and female monsters. You've proven it to me repeatedly. You've proven to me repeatedly that you're not going to do what's right. So where's that going to leave me? I'm not going to stop until this is all undone. So we're going to continue on, aren't we? Because you're not going to fucking do what I know you want to do to me. You want to sue me into suicide. Sorry, not going to happen. Remember about the fucking flip this script? Right here, right now. So fucking pay attention. Get your fucking notepad and your pen out. So the differences between the PTSI and the complex PTSI. So with the PTSI, you have avoidance of triggers and isolation. So my triggers are anytime I see a, um, a, an, an apparent law enforcement officer, uh, if I have to even think about going down to 850 Burdett Avenue, um, there are just certain places... A district of Saanich now, that, that whole office area now is a trigger for me, right? Having to deal with any fucking idiot who works for the government, there's another trigger, right? Because you're just talking to a wall. You're just talking to... <laughs> right, okay. Aren't you fucking clever? Avoidance of relationships and chronic isolation. Well, that's exactly right. Isn't that funny that the world, that the creatures of the world have answers for what's going on? And I'm the one who can put the puzzle pieces together and paint the picture for you of why why things are happening the way they're happening. So... Again, we're peculiar people because as he, the humans are toxic to us. And the interactions we have with the humans causes us chronic trauma. 
because it's chronic war, right? Think about it for a second. Think about what Jesus was trying to tell you when he was here. He kept telling you that there are different species here. He told you he was a different species. He told you that. He said, I'm from above. I'm not from below. That's why my level of intelligence doesn't match yours. That's why you can't understand what I'm telling you because you are lower than I am. You're human and he knew it. He took one look and he knew. You open your mouth, we know who you are. You identify yourselves. Right? Weeds. Toxic weeds. If you don't weed your garden, the weeds take over. You understand me? Could you possibly ever understand me? You have any idea how traumatizing it is for me to continue to speak to the dead? You're getting paid to do a fucking job. I'm not asking you for a fucking favor. I'm telling you to do your fucking job. Do you understand me? Yeah, warning. <laughs> Signs you're dealing with toxic humans. I dread being around you. I get sick to my stomach and feel sick to my stomach every time I think about having to deal with you or having anything to do with you or certainly asking you for any type of assistance. I'm exhausted and angry after dealing with you. Yes, that's pretty much how it goes for me. You're causing me harm because you yourselves are toxic. And of course, then I feel bad about myself, but it's not my fault, right? It's not my fault that you're a weed. And it's not my fault that I'm a stalk of wheat. But there's never going to be a meeting of the mind between the wheat and the tare. So I'm a sensitive. I'm an empath. I'm a sensitive. Do you understand what that really means? Stop and think about it for a second. A sensitive is like a raw nerve. I have the sensitivities of a raw nerve. That's how sensitive I am. And when I have to do business with, or when the wicked are attacking me, which is constantly, it causes me physical symptoms. Right? You understand that? I'm a sensitive. I'm an empath. All the peculiar people are. We have to be because we're witnesses for the king. And of course, I know you're going to hate this. This is one of the peculiar people speaking to you. Speaking to you, giving you counsel, which you clearly fucking need. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Right? Fight for the rights of widows. Now, why would one of the peculiar people be telling you to do that? Because there's a problem in your communities with the opposite happening. And that's why you're being given counsel by the living. Right? So the peculiar people are forbidden. We are not to associate with the weeds, with the liars, with the children of the devil. We know who you are and you know who we are. That's why there's war between us. That's why there's full-fledged fucking war between us. That's why we hate you and you hate us. That's why you refuse to do what is right. Because you can't do what is right. You're not wired that way. You have to be forced to do what is right. So you, you, you folks of the world are interesting. You have all these different labels for the children of the devil. Narcissist is one of them. So when we, the peculiar people, have to be around... The narcissists, the children of the devil, it causes us loss of interest and enjoyment in all activities that we once liked. The feeling of not caring anymore. Which again, is me explaining to you my silence for such a length of time. You are not going to change. You are not going to do what's right because I demand that you do what is right. You are going to have to be forced to do what is right. And I'm not going to back down this time. No. I'm afraid not. 
So there is never going to be a relationship between the peculiar people and the sick, sick male and female humans here, right? Medically, genetically, scientifically, animals. That's why the intelligence level, the understanding level, is that of an animal. Because it's a human. It is not a man. It is not a woman. It is a human. And it's, they're just so disgusting and toxic that that's what, it, what happens to the peculiar people when we're forced to have anything to do. Mental and emotional exhaustion. Exhaustion from having to put up with and be around those who cannot do what is right. So what causes this, this, these, these symptoms and these issues, recent traumatic events, history of neglect, recent incredibly stressful, and our anxiety-provoking events? Well, yeah. Yeah, there was a couple of satanic rituals ran last year around this time on me uh, by those pretending to be. Fuck, I don't know what you were pretending to be. Uh, we're going to have to talk about that, though, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to go through what you said to me. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. Not for you, it's not going to be fun. It's going to be a fucking riot for me. I'm going to fucking just... <laughs> holy fuck you. Yeah, fucking just fucking psychotic fucking pukes I'm dealing with. A whole coven of them. Tried to fucking steal more money. Fucking not give me any justice at all. Well, that won't be fucking the way that fucking plays out at the end of the day. And so, I mean, this is all harm caused to me in my life by um, the pukes who just committed an act of bear tree, stole my house and embezzled every dollar, leaving me homeless and destitute on purpose. Because their whole goal, their whole goal is to murder me. And then the fucking pukes, they run and hide. They give, me, they give me the silent treatment, right? Because that's what an animal would do. That's the level of intelligence and class the animals have, right? The animals like David Eby and John Hargon and those fucking pukes who ate and abetted the fucking fraudulent foreclosure. And now you've got the banker pukes who are all giving me the silent treatment. You've got the fucking other assholes in the District of Sanich here giving me the silent treatment. You've got the BC Ombuds per Has anybody actually gone in and read the reviews online of the BC Ombuds person's office? It's quite telling. You know, you only need two or three witnesses to establish the truth that that whole fucking office is a joke and it will be defunded. Yeah, all the little pigs need to go find real jobs in the real world, okay? You're absolutely fucking useless. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Years of reviews of individual saying exactly the same thing. Now, gee, isn't that interesting? Hmm? That's why Jay Chalk is not doing anything about the District of San Sanit owing me close to $35,000. Isn't that right, Jay Chalk? The silent treatment is abuse. So when I'm abused, I will be abusing my abuser. Yeah, that's how life works. If you do me harm, I'm going to do you harm. That's how life works. And you're not going to stop me because I'm above the law. You, All of you are above the law. That's how you want this little sick fucking society to roll. You're all above the law. Awesome. That's fucking awesome. Me too. I'm above the law too. Mm-hmm. That's how the game is played. What's good for the witch is good for the peculiar people. The narcissist has a double standard. Of course they fucking do, right? That's the sick mentality of a fucking witch. If you challenge them on their actions, they're likely to respond with rage or the silent treatment. Yeah, that's right. So when I inform the fucking sandwich fucking PD that I've got them committing criminal act acts and civil wrongdoing against me, they decided to fucking go on the attack. Right, and the December 10th, unfortunately... The audio didn't take, but I was attacked again on December the 10th, intimidated into silence by a male and female uh, 
dream team that was sent over here by some fucking witch pretending to be the district. You're actors, right? You're acting in a role. Trust me, you're going to be responsible in your personal fucking capacity, okay? I don't care what your fucking dream team is or fucking who you think you are, the fucking SWAT team or the guns and the tasers and the bullshit and the acts you've all got going on there. You're responsible in your personal fuck capacity for committing indictable crime against me yet again. And this is now a pattern of behavior, okay? It's a pattern of behavior that you hate me and that you continually aid and abet criminals who have my stolen property. Should we go through the criminal code and read what you're doing to me? Because it's all indictable crime and you're not above the law. Because if you are, I am. And isn't that going to be fun? What are you going to fucking do now? Are you going to take it into a courtroom? Yeah, I'd love to see one of the attorney generals fucking come at me with fucking anything. You over fucking played your hand, you fucking pigs, pigs, and you fucking dogs. And I'm sorry, I was nice for years. I was nice, I was polite, I was fucking, I showed honor, I showed respect. And since you showed me no honor, you showed me no respect, you showed me no fucking mercy, I'm afraid I won't be doing any of those things for you ever fucking again. That fucking ship went fucking bye-bye. Long fucking time ago now. Yeah, you're gonna fucking be treated and spoken to exactly like the fucking pigs, peaks, and dogs that you are. You're not going to do what's right unless you're forced. You're fucking offensive to me. Your fucking mere existence is offensive to me, okay? You can be fucking guaranteed I'm going home this week. None of you fucking pigs, pukes, and dogs are going to stop me. Even with your fucking disgusting, disrespectful, fucking ridiculous silent treatment. Passive-aggressive form of emotional abuse. You're abusers. You're fucking abusers. That's what you do to control and manipulate and to punish. So you're victim shaming. You're victim shamers. I come to you and I tell you I'm the victim of a fucking crime and you turn around and you fucking attack me. Gee, that's interesting. It happens to me every time. I come to report a crime. I'm treated like I'm committing a crime. So we're clearly fucking ruled by criminals, aren't we? Yeah, that's going to be a problem. That's a problem for the peculiar people. We don't put up with that kind of fucking bullshit, okay? We don't give a fuck who you are or how many fucking letters you have after your name. We don't care who the fuck you think you are. We know who you are. Fucking low-life fucking scuzz bags. Go look in the mirror. You actually look like fucking monsters. What is the silent treatment? It's a form of punishment, control, to cause harm. To cause harm. Yeah, that's why all the fucking big dogs like David Eby and John Hargon... And all the big fucking political pigs. And anybody who can actually do something about what's happening to me, that's why they all stay silent. It's to make me feel invisible. It's to make me feel powerless. It's to make me feel insignificant. And it's to make me feel like I don't exist. When in actual fucking truth, it's all of you fucking pigs that don't exist. You have the same value in the eyes of the king as a fucking dog. Yeah. There's no coincidence in the world why law enforcement are referred to as pigs, okay? There is no coincidence in the world of why law enforcement in North America are referred to as pigs. Oh, look, there's my house. And look, there's my spouse's name on the address of our house. We've owned that house since um, the end of January 2003. It's private fucking property. It's private property. And there's a contract I'm enforcing. We're going to go over the contract right now. Because it looks like the fucking idiots that I'm dealing with can't even understand a two-page contract, which is crystal fucking clear. And I don't argue with pigs about contracts. You got that there, Big Mike? Staff fucking sergeant who attacked me at the end of November there when I told you my house was stolen. You don't stand there and argue with me about a document I'm an expert on and a document you know nothing about. So let's go over it. 
This is a lawfully enforceable contract. I am the woman that enforces this contract. I'm enforcing this contract. I have an obligation and a duty, first of all, to my spouse, most importantly to my spouse. You will not disrespect my spouse's will over my fucking dead body. Let's read it together, shall we, kids? This is the testamentary trust of myself, the man, Gerald Wayne Jack Daly, of the city of Victoria in the province of British Columbia. My spouse's name written like that is a trademark. I revoke all my prior wills and codicils. Number two, I appoint my friend to be the executor of this my will and the trustee of my estate. If this woman is unable or unwilling to act or continue to act as my trustee, I appoint my friend to be my trustee in her place. Number three, I give my trustee all my property of every kind and wherever located to administer as I direct in this will. In administering my estate, my trustee may convert or retain my estate as set out in paragraph 4A of this will. Now we need to stop right there because now we're going to go and read paragraph 4A of this testamentary trust. In addition to all powers conferred by law, I give my trustee the following powers to be exercised or not exercised at the discretion of my trustee for the administration of my estate and the trusts of my will. A. My trustee may convert my estate or any part of my estate into money and decide how, when, and on what terms. And my trustee may keep my estate or any part of it in the form it is at my death for as long as my trustee decides, even for the duration of the trusts in this will. This power applies even if the property is not an investment authorized under this will. A debt is owing on the property or the property does not produce income. Did you understand the last sentence of this lawful contract? Let's read it together again. This power applies even if the property is not an investment authorized under this will. A debt is owing on the property or the property does not produce income. That is talking specifically about our home. This is a testamentary trust my spouse has placed our home inside this trust to protect us from third parties. It wouldn't matter what debt was owed. It wouldn't have mattered what was owed. My house, that house, our house, could not be taken from me. There was no legal mechanism that can be utilized to steal my house. Do you understand? Now that right there, I don't even need to read any more of this contract that I'm enforcing. There is no legal mechanism in British Columbia or in Canada, where a third party can move in on a trust, blow up the trust, and steal the entire inheritance from the benefactors. There's no way that can be done legally because it wouldn't make sense legally to be able to do that. And yet that's exactly what's happened to me. So I'm going to undo what's been done now because this is a legally, lawfully a binding contract. I am the one to enforce the contract. That trademark in paragraph two is my alleged name. That trademark in all capital letters, that's my alleged name. Right. So whose house is that? 
I give my trustee all my property of every kind and wherever located. Right. And that property was half owned by myself and half owned by my spouse. A divided interest. So we all understand, right, that my spouse was the grantor. He is the lawmaker because this is, a, this is the trust that he set up to protect us, to protect him and me and a couple of other individuals. And it's my job to make sure that everybody follows this law because this contract is the law. Now, I'm the trustee. So legally, apparently, I'm the owner of what was left, what was gifted to me. So as the owner, I'm the one giving the direction. Do we all understand that? Is that really that difficult to understand? So that house located where it's located in the district of Saanich. Okay, so the trespassers on the property, they don't even have a legal right. They have no rights at all because that's stolen property. It's been stolen. It doesn't matter how it was stolen. That's irrelevant. And, and it doesn't matter who stole it either. That's also fucking irrelevant. It's stolen property, and it has to be returned to the lawful owner who has a real right. I have a real right. I have an equitable interest. That's the real right in that property. I am a life tenant there, so saith the legal acts in British Columbia. I'm a benefactor of the trust my spouse set up, so yes. So... I have repeatedly issued eviction notices to the trespassers on that property and they have to leave because now I'm going to have to absolutely insist that charges be filed. And if I have to do the paperwork myself, I'll do the paperwork myself. If I have to utilize the cars in the district of Saanich to go and knock on the door and tell them to get out because I'm laying criminal charges... Because you're not going to do it. You're not going to do anything for me except con to continue to commit indictable crime against me and civil harm. You're going to continue to cause me civil harm and commit indictable crime against me because there's just way too many patterns of this happening again and again and again and you're never going to change because you can't change. A child of the devil is born that way. They don't change midway. That's ridiculous. That's not the way it works. So while I, a woman, am trying to survive after being purposely rendered homeless and destitute, right, yeah, I find out that, uh, yes, it's not the first uh, frauds who have got access to my stolen property it's some new frauds so this is a null and void mortgage the application to the victoria land title office is based on title sorry it's based on first application then title then mortgage fraud so it doesn't matter who is on title now they don't have legal right they do not have a legal right to be there and I'm also wondering why, when they bought the property for seven fifty, they've listed it at eight sixty. That's that's right there. There's a problem. But you see, only a woman with eyes that see can see the problem. Understand? That's what makes us peculiar. We have eyes that see. We understand what's happening and why. That's what makes us peculiar. That's why we're targeted for genocide. All of us are. That explains all of the bear tree in my life. That explains it. Do you understand? So Sander Dennis and Benjamin Howe um, have no legal claim to my property. They cannot continue to um, rent out my property. It's stolen property. Uh, that's a myriad of indictable crimes they're committing, along with civil wrongdoing. 
Yeah, that's not going to continue on. I don't think so, because let's look at the act, okay? Let's look at the trespass act. So we've established that I'm the lawful owner entitled to immediate possession of that property. We've already established that. You can't change that. I'm so sorry for you all. I know you would love me to be homeless and destitute for the rest of my life and to be continually raped the rest of my life. I know that that would be just fucking tickle you all pink. Unfortunately, I'm sick and tired and I'm not going to let that continue on. So let's look at occupier. So the occupier is the woman lawfully entitled to possession of the premises. Right, that's me. I have the legal documents and I have a lawful contract to enforce to prove that I am the occupier with lawful entitlement to possession of those premises. Now, trespass is prohibited when... Um, a person has been directed either orally or in writing by the occupier of the premises or an authorized person. I'm also the authorized woman. I have authorization to issue eviction. So a woman who, people who have been directed, sorry, the folks who have been directed either orally or in writing by an occupier of the premises or an authorized individual to leave the premises, to stop engaging in an activity on or in the premises, commits an offense if the persons do not leave the premises as applicable as soon as practicable after receiving the direction or re-enters the premises or resumes the activity on or in the premises as applicable. So this is now why I have to lay trespass charges. I was kind. I was polite at first. That ship has sailed now. No mercy will be shown. None. Fucking zero mercy will be shown. If the fucking animals, the fucking humans inside that house can't follow a simple fucking command and direction, that's an issue for society. That's an issue for society. You need to take a look at these individuals if they can't understand a two-page contract, a lawful contract. And then it was explained repeatedly to their liar, some Victoria liar, that the real estate agent uh, identified as being involved in this illegal action and this illegal transferring of property that can't be sold because it's trust property. It belongs to a trust. You can't touch trust property. I don't care who the fuck you are. Trespassed act. A person without the consent of the owner is a trespasser. Thank you very much. Exactly. Now, for those of you who go, you need to talk to a liar. You need to go get a liar. You need a liar. You need to have a fucking liar look at this. <laughs> no fucking thank you. I'm a woman who is fully capable of handling her own fears and reading the fucking bullshit that's written down here that you folks of society want to follow or have govern you in your lives, okay? If you can't read this and understand it, you shouldn't be a part of society, period, if you have to get somebody else to read something for you and interpret it for you. Law is real simple. Everybody has to be able to understand it or it's not law. It's a bunch of fucking witchcraft. You need to run for your life from it. So, okay. So a person without the consent of the owner is a trespasser. So so are they if <clears throat> they're asked to leave. So they've been asked to leave months ago and they're still there. So now this puts me again in a place where I'm being traumatized. Now again I'm being fucking traumatized because sick fucking animals with no fucking understanding, no hope and no fucking future cannot follow simple fucking commands. I'm giving you commands. You don't get to question or argue or fucking think about a fucking command. I'm a woman. I have jurisdiction over the fucking humans. Read the DSM. It's all throughout the DSM. A person found on enclosed land must give their true name and address to the owner of the land. And if they don't do so, they're committing an offense. Okay, so I've asked um, 
these um, Benjamin Hound, Sander Dennis's liar, for the names of the trespassers on my property. That he refused the, the thing. The, the it he, he it refuses to cooperate. It's stonewalling me. It's giving me the silent treatment. Because this is conspiracy to commit genocide. Remember what's going on here. Yes, you've all joined fucking. You've all joined arm in arm conspiracy to commit genocide we're gonna sue her into suicide we're gonna fucking steal everything she's ever been gifted and then she's just gonna kill herself and we can go fucking suck each other's cocks and total each other's twats because we'll be so excited about what we did to her good luck with that not gonna happen as we can fucking full well see you fucking done it all to me now haven't you sure you have yeah just fucking disgusting is what y'all are so there's uh there's there's going to be a damage cost to these trespasses for causing me harm. Right? So have I identified myself to you? I'm a special prosecutor, okay? I'm prosecutor for the king. I uh prosecute um the humans down here who attack the peculiar people. So I'm a, I'm a special investigator. Right, so I have full jurisdiction to whatever documentation or paperwork or processes that I require to do my job. So if I request your services to assist me in doing my job, you won't be telling me no. You got that? And again, you can call me the counselor. I'm counsel for the king. Yeah, we follow the law to the letter. I've sent it to you multiple times. But don't worry, we'll go over it again. I know you're fucking sick in the head. I know you're all mentally ill. You know, you humans, it's a problem amongst the humans, eh? The mental illness. It's actually written down in the DSM that the king, he sends you that mental illness because you don't listen. It's in the curses in the book of Deuteronomy. Shall we go over it? No, I know you don't want to do that. You hate, you hate the DSM. It um, exposes you. So there are criminal charges being laid. I'm also actually going to add common nuisance and uh, criminal negligence to the charges. I'm, 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 I have to file them. I have to because um, uh, the criminals will not do what's right um, unless they're forced. And even then, once they're forced, they're still not going to do what's right. You know, that's how you know that it has to be put down. It's got to be put down like a bad, bad, fucking sick fucking dog. So Senator Dennis Benjamin Howe and the trespassers and also um, the District of Saanich uh, actors acting as law enforcement officers, you've for two months now done everything in your power to make sure I don't go home and I don't get help. So uh, you have to be charged with mischief as well. Sure you do, because now you're all in it together, aren't you? Sure you are. So arrest by owner of property, well... I'm under five foot four and I weigh under 110 pounds. So I don't have the equipment that is necessary to arrest the trespassers on my. I don't have the equipment necessary that I would need to do things like that. But I do know District of Saanich has that kind of equipment. So if you're not going to do your jobs, then I'll have to utilize your equipment because again, I have um, I have a special jurisdiction. Right, because I'm prosecutor for the king. Any woman who can survive multiple acts of genocide, you'll fucking bow. You'll fucking bow when I come into your presence. Because that's a warrior. That's a warrior right there. That's what they look like. That's what they can survive. Multiple acts of genocide, one after the other. So, of course, trespassing also causes civil harm. So again, right, um, financial compensation is due because there's, um, unfortunately, District of Saanich um, actors acting as uh, the police department are also guilty of inducing breach of contract. You have the contract. You know the contract. I've read you the contract. You've read the contract. We've gone over the contract. You're guilty of inducing breach of contract. You're inducing breach of contract. Guilty of unlawful means guilty of conversion. D d do I need to go over this with you? I mean, it's, it's plain English. 
when you cause civil harm, you have to be held accountable. You have to be, you have to incur loss because I'm incurring loss by you not being able to follow fucking instructions, simple instructions, or even follow the law. Or how about just the fucking, the basic tenets of morality? How about that? How about we just stick with that, okay? Yeah, I'm not going to continue to tell you. I'm not going to continue to live in precarious, unsafe, unhealthy housing. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to incur another fucking dime of costs for housing or for storage locker fees. So we're, we're, we're now, I'm now got you fucking boxed into a corner, right? Because all the monies have to be paid back since I've been rendered homeless in March 2020. All those monies have to be paid back to me. Those aren't my costs. So it's just going to be a whole lot cheaper for the District of Saanich right, to cooperate with what I'm telling you that you're going to be doing because you're going to be doing this whether you want to or not. You have to follow the law. You have to. You have to do your job. So Digit of Sandwich, here's a receipt for storage locker fees. What you're going to need to do, Fred Hayes, since I know that you don't know what to do, right? I can see that you don't from history and from uh, doing some research into who you are and what you are. You're going to need to uh, get the accounts payable department to call up the West Shore u lock here, and you're going to need to get every single bill that I have paid because the District of Sandwich is responsible for reimbursing me for all those costs, and I need that reimbursement immediately. I have a life to live, and I have jobs and work I need to do, okay, and I'm not going to continue to live this way because of um, the sheer ugliness and ignorance of the individuals I'm trying to deal with. Right, so we know that the ombudsperson is, um, we've, got, we've got reviews online, you know, I've got history with them as well. Um, they are just a joke, just a joke from word one. A total waste of time, total waste of time. Don't bother wasting your time with these um, these uh, low-life humans here. Now, they're all arrogant and uh, foul and disgusting. You can't have a, an intelligent conversation with any of them. I've tried. When my son was abducted and then he was chosen for uh, the forced adoption, the hum- the uh, child trafficking uh, a problem that you have here in your province here, your disgusting province, I went there. Yeah, and they didn't, they didn't care. They could have cared less that I was being treated unfairly. No, they were not concerned with uh, me being persecuted and slandered and destroyed and abused by these witches who um, traffic children in the province for for profit and sport. They could have cared less. And every single time I've had a problem, they've done absolutely nothing for me. And they're not going to do anything for me, right? Because they hate me. Yeah, the public servants, the male and female monsters posing as, acting as, the BC uh, ombudsperson. No, they're uh, they're racist bigots. Uh, they're uh, they they don't have to do anything for their paycheck. That paycheck keeps rolling in every two weeks, whether they do their jobs or not. Right? I mean, who holds them accountable? <laughs> Lana Popham? Yeah, fucking yeah. No, they're all feeding from the same trough. These swine. Yeah, but uh, CIBC does uh, has a has a uh, has a bill to pay as well. Yeah, that bill has been overdue for years. Unfortunately, uh, the witches that I was being attacked by in the court um, hated me so much. Their intention was clearly to commit acts of genocide, um, as they always do to me every time they file some vexatious, frivolous, ridiculous fucking bullshit claim against myself and my family. Um, the bank has been ordered repeatedly. You've been notified repeatedly. You have a bill due. You have a bill due. Once you stole my house, this is a court order. I've signed it. That's all who needs to sign it. Thanks. Yeah, no. Right. That's, I'm the only one who needs to sign it. So right down here at the bottom, CIBC was ordered to pay an invoice that was due in February, now that's two years ago, 
So now we have a problem because that bill has been overdue for two years. And uh, these are the terms and conditions of the invoice. Um, so it's $175,000 CIBC. And since you made, what, $6 billion last year, all of it on fraud, by fraud, you'll be paying that bill immediately. I'm not going to wait for you. Okay, you better get it clear real quick. You owe my family billions of dollars in damages for stealing my house. You owe my family billions of dollars in damages. Loss and harm for stealing my house. So this is just the tip of the iceberg of what you will be compensating my family with, whether you like it or not. Do you understand? You can read through this, right? Unfortunately, it's not going to be a payment to myself in trust. It's going to be a bank draft or a certified check made out to just myself, Victorian Evans. Just myself, Victorian Evans. And so I calculated the, the interest because the, uh, the interest is um, written right here. If payment is not received as required, 20% compound interest is added to the amount due every seven days. So you calculate that out and I, I need to be paid. You owe me, you've owed me that for years. Stealing my house was the biggest fucking mistake you've ever made in your fucking career. You fucking frauds. CIBC. So again, CIBC, you've been given this invoice repeatedly. And you're going to write on the bank draft that this is a gift. It's a gift. You're going to gift me what you owe me. Right? Because you're reimbursing me for housing costs that weren't mine after you committed application and title fraud. So you would be reimbursing me for those costs. And then there's um, property management that I did for you when you stole my house. So I looked after your property for you and I will be paid for looking after my property that you stole from me. So you'll be paying me for that. So those are the fees for what I did for you, but you're gifting me. You're gifting me those monies, right? It's a gift because let's not go into what you really do. Cause, Oh, look at here. You actually, you actually post this stuff that, uh, for the year end, October 31st, 2021, CIBC reported net income of $6.4 billion, adjusted net income of $6.7 billion. So why is it that you're not paying that bill? Why is that that I've been repeatedly raped because you wouldn't pay the bill? Why have I been homeless and destitute, unable to meet any of my basic needs because you won't pay the bill? But you're posting fucking $6.7 billion in um, profit. Because we don't want to go through the banking act, do we? I mean, man, I'll fucking, fuck, I will just destroy you if we go through the banking act. Right, listen to the, the bank has the capacity of a natural person. Yeah, according to this act, the rights, powers, and privileges of a natural person. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my God. Yeah, clearly the monsters have written this. Clearly the monsters have written this. Because then we can go onto CABC's website and we can look at all these lies that they tell about what they do or what they want you to believe that they do, but they don't do any of this. CIBC is a total fraud. They do the opposite of their corporate responsibilities. Exactly. What kind of fucking corporate responsibility would it be to steal a widow's house? Embezzle all the money from the theft of that house and then leave that woman homeless and destitute. Is that part of our corporate responsibilities? Because that's an act of genocide. You need to be shut down. You're a total fucking fraud. Everything you do is fraud. And I'm going to teach the public about what exactly it is you do and how exactly you fucking post those fucking billions of dollars in profit. You know I became an expert on the banking industry, don't you? You should have fucking left me alone, you fucking pigs, pukes, and fucking banker dogs. Everything written here are lies. CIBC cares about profit, not about clients. So I'm afraid, CIBC, you're going to have to be taking all this fucking bullshit off of your little fucking website and your corporate responsibility. Crap that you try to fucking make people believe because, uh, mind you, people wouldn't believe this shit anyway. Let's see here. Oh, we're going to fight inequality and injustice and eradicate poverty by 2030. Yep. 
That's what they apparently claim to do. That's not true. Achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Really? So how the fuck are you empowering me as a woman by stealing my house and your fucking political buddies there, the fucking minister of finance in British Columbia embezzled fucking $700,000? How is that empowering a woman? Oh, it's not, is it? Ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Well, I'm afraid that's not true either, is it? Leaving me homeless and destitute? And you all knew because I kept screaming from the rooftops what you were doing and you were all like, No, I can't see it. No, I can't see it. Of course you can't fucking see it. You're fucking dead already. That's why your eyes are blind and your ears are fucking deaf. That's why you don't understand me because you're monsters. You're male and female monsters. You're fucking animals. You got the same understanding as fucking animals. Greedy fucking pigs. Oh, they get into the human rights bullshit. Well, a human is defined legally as a monster. Why would that be? Because it's exactly the fucking truth. That's why. CIBC, a caring co. No, a caring company would never steal a widow's house and hundreds of thousands, leaving her intentionally homeless and destitute for years. CIBC contributes to organizations that promote the health and well-being of Canadians. No, you fu- you, are you fucking joking? You're just fucking disgusting. You're just fucking frauds. That's all you are, fucking frauds. Okay, so you can't call me up on the telephone. I don't communicate that way, so don't even fucking bother doing that. You can text me. You can text me, and you all know my number. I know you know my number. The only way I'll communicate with any of you is by text message or by email because I need a record of everything that's happening, right? Because all that's going on are indictable crimes being committed against me by everyone that's having something to do with my life. So I'm going to need to, again, explain that Scott Green, I'm talking to you now, Scott Green, you and Fred Hayes now are going to prioritize this these issues. I am now priority number one for the actors posing as addicted to Saanich. I'm now priority number one for you, Scott Green. You're acting in a role as the big head honcho there of the Saanich Police Department, okay? I'm now priority number one. Me, getting me back into my house is now priority number one. Charging. Did you hear what I said to you? I'm charging the four trespassers on my property. I'm charging them with criminal offenses. I need to be alerted to when that happens. I more than likely need to be there when that happens because I'm taking possession back of my property. That's stolen property. I'm taking possession back of my stolen property. So they need to be charged. They will be charged forthwith with common nuisance, criminal negligence, mischief, and trespassing. Common nuisance, criminal negligence, and mischief have to also go on the two in Victoria, Benjamin Hall and Sandra Dennis, but the trespass charges obviously are only on the four that are trespassing on my property because I need them gone. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm taking possession of my stolen property. That's my right. That's the contract that I'm enforcing. That's what it says. And we've gone over it now a few times, haven't we? So if you continue to treat me the way you've been treating me in the past... More persecution, more hate crimes, more discrimination, more gender-based violence. Seriously? You really want to have that on your fucking conscience? Do you even have a conscience, maybe? Maybe that's the question I should ask. Would you want me to treat you this way if the fucking tables were turned? I doubt it, right? So you don't get to have a say-so in who I charge and what I charge them with. I'm well aware of the law, thanks. I'm also well aware of the legal world that you all live in. So those are persons on that property. And those acts, all of them, including the Criminal Code of Canada, apply to those persons. So those persons are breaking the law they have for two months now. I'm not going to continue to be homeless and destitute. Having my basic needs not met. That's not going to continue. I don't know how to make myself any more clear to you. I just don't know what else. I don't know, I don't know how to teach the truth to those who are not of the truth. 
I don't understand why you can't follow simple instructions. I'm a woman and I'm speaking to you. I'm providing you with instructions. I have an obligation and a duty to protect who Jack wanted protected. Jack wanted me protected. That's why Jack gifted me our home. So I'm going home. I'm going to be moving my property home. I will not show any mercy to any of the trespassers or their property. I will treat them the way they've treated me. So don't come and knock on my door. I have been traumatized way too much. I don't communicate that way. That causes me terror. It makes me physically sick for days. And you did that to me multiple times last month in order to intimidate me into silence. So you cannot treat me that way. I need to be fully informed about 24 hours before something physical happens. Because I need to prepare myself mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. You have no idea the damage that's been done to me. And you will respect that. You will respect my need for peace and the way I must be communicated with because of all the shit that I've gone through and I put up with. Do you understand? Email communication only or text message communication only? I am now priority number one for those acting as addicted to Saanich. We're putting me back in my house. And there's going to be arrests and criminal charges laid. I will not be paying another storage locker month. And if, um, but that's not my responsibility anyway. That's a district of Saanich. So you now have the bill. You now have a copy of the bill. That's the fiduciary duty of the district of Saanich to pay that bill and to reimburse me for all the other costs that I've incurred up to this point. You're going to do what's right. We're not going to discuss it. We're not going to go over it and go over it. This is what's happening. So it needs to happen now. Do you understand?